story, and it's a scary thing to stand up here and sing in front of everybody. Especially when you're Benito, because he, does, he smiles at everything. It's so hard to smile. <laughs> sing about death and hope was lost. And he, <laughs> when he promote, when he, whenever he finds a girl that likes him, he proposes. He's going to be grinning. <laughs> Luke chapter 1, very familiar stories as the story, Luke chapter 1, as the announcement was made to Mary that she was going to have a child. So we're going to be in Luke chapter 1, and most of the rest of the time will be in Ephesians chapter 2, if you want to find that ahead of time, but Luke, Luke chapter 1. Give just a moment to find that. If you have children, well, I'd encourage you to read, uh, read the book of the read, the book of, read Luke chapter one each morning or each evening with the kids. Get real familiar with these stories, and uh, as long as there's Christmas all around us, let's get it right. And uh, to know that Jesus was uh, related to John the Baptist, just little things like that you can get in this story. So Luke chapter one. Let's stand together and let's make sure our phone are off for just a few minutes, that would be great. Um, we're going to read over in Luke chapter 1, in verse 31, verse 31, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, and he shall be great, and she shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of David his father, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, uh, and behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Verse 38 is our text. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed, be it unto me according to thy word. Mary just said, that's just fine, whatever you say. <laughs> and that's a pretty amazing thing we just read. Father, bless the Bible as we look at it. Please help us. To learn it and to apply it in Jesus' name, Amen. You can be seated. Keep your Bible open there for a moment. Mary said, "Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. I'm here. I'm available. Whatever you want." And we might think that would be a great thing. Um, you know, we I talked a little bit about this at our soul winning meeting yesterday. We have songs, oh holy night, the star was brightly shining, and, and uh, the angels, behold, I bring you great tidings of uh, tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, and, and all of our world circling the nativity is very upbeat. But this is a little lady who had stayed pure, who was going to be called impure for the rest of her life. <clears throat> Jesus was 30 years old and they said to Jesus we be not born of fornication they still 30 years later they accused Mary of infidelity Joseph had been a clean young man he was engaged but had not been involved intimately with Mary and Joseph was going to be considered either Mary an, an impure girl or that they had been in, impure before marriage and they had not their their reputation was going to be gone and it wasn't going to be gone for an hour or for a day it was forever what did you just think through with me just for a moment socially her friends her friends were going to think she was unfaithful there were going to be gossips what were they going to say on facebook <laughs> Now remember, here is Mary talking with the angel. Here's Joseph somewhere else. Mary didn't know who Joseph, what Joseph was going to do. 
she might be losing her, her husband. She might be losing her financial security. We don't know. But, but I can tell you this, these were scary days. What would her parents think? And we know as parents, we love them just the same. But, but uh, boy, the old devil can play on people's hearts. Financially, how would she provide for this situation? The book of Psalms, if you just want to write it down, Psalms 37, 7 says this, rest in the Lord. All right. Rest in the Lord. Rest. To, you know, like rest. Rest in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. I don't understand what I'm hearing from this angel. This angel's telling me the impossible. I'm going to rest in the Lord. And I'm going to wait patiently for him. Psalms 37 is this chapter everybody ought to, ought to read all the time. But, but we can rest in the Lord in our trials. I'm going to give you three quick things that we can rest in today. Just first of all, can we, with, with your burden, now obviously the angels, another angel came to Joseph and said, it's okay, you stick with Mary. And they did marry, get married, and they did give birth, and, but it was scary. You might be facing that scary hour. You're a senior, you're going to have to graduate. What do you do now? Flunk a few classes and stay. Okay. You have a child getting ready to go to college, and you're trying to think, how am I going to pay for this? Too late. Don't worry about it. Don't send them to a university, it'll make it a lot easier. But um, what are we going to do with our future? We need a job. We need a house. We need, um, we need some. What are we going to do with uh, the children, our grandchildren? We worry. But can we not rest in the Lord? Psalms 37, 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Can't we, can't we trust Him? First of all, can we not rest in the faithfulness of in the faithfulness of God. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, God is faithful. Amen. Who will not tempt you above that you are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape. Can we not trust that God is faithful? Do you know, our scientists can tell you when the sun's coming up, not tomorrow morning, but in a hundred years. They can tell you when Halley's Comet is going to come through the sky again. They can't tell you how to teach your children to obey. Come on, Don't sign this. Amen. But can we not trust the God? Wouldn't it be something? I always think about this. You're expecting a baby. The doctor says, you're going to have a baby. We have five ladies in the room going to have babies. Five new babies. That's a lot of crying. <laughs> we, need new, we, we, need, we need more nursery workers over there. But you go to the doctor. The doctor says, you're going to have a baby. And you say, when do you think? Oh, six months, 12 months, 18 months. Aren't you glad it's settled? Sure. Your house payment is due. What day of the month is it due on? Guess. We don't do anything that way. We're going to have a test in calculus. What day? Not gonna tell you. <laughs> and you know what? We as humans, we try to be somewhat faithful, but God is faithful. Amen. Spring and fall, summer and winter, it's all set. Isn't it something that, wouldn't it be something if we went from winter to spring and back to winter just to mess with us? That's what Josh would do if he was God. Not the youth director Josh, that Josh over there. Isn't it great that God is faithful? How about you go to the gas station with your car and your, your vehicle takes diesel. You have one of those big Dodge diesel trucks. And the gas pumps aren't labeled. And you, come, you go to the desk, the inside, which one is diesel? You just got to guess. We don't live that way, right? You can trust God. 
Trust in the Lord. We can rest in the Lord. What am I going to do? My health is failing. Rest in the Lord. Can we rest in God's faithfulness? Can we rest in His faithfulness? How about this? Um, could we rest in His sovereignty? That God is God. I love the fact that when men are unfaithful, God is always faithful. I love the fact that when, when men try to hurt people or try to influence things, you know what? Washington, D.C., don't even worry about it. Worry about heaven. Everything's all right. God is sovereign. I love the story of Ruth. Ruth, in your Bible, was a little gal. She's an immigrant to a new country, new language. She's far from home. She has no living relatives, just a mother in law. And she tries to find a job. And, and here she is. She doesn't know where she's going to live. She doesn't know where she's going to work. But you know what Ruth does? Ruth is going to rest in the Lord. And what happens? God laid everything out. And Ruth became the grandmother of King David. You can rest in God's sovereignty. The sovereignty of God. You can rest in it. Look over to Ephesians chapter 2. Let's look at this. Could you not rest in the love of God? Ephesians chapter 2. I want to challenge you. Rest in the love of God. You might say, I don't, I don't know if God loves me. Look to the, look to the cross. Amen. God loves you. Right. Ephesians chapter 2. You say, I don't know. I just don't know if... If God loves me, my life's been a mess. God let His Son die for you. He loves you. Amen. You say, well, there have been a lot of problems. Well, this world's full of problem people, but you've got a God in heaven who loves you. We're going to look just quickly at a couple of verses. This morning, I want to urge you, rest in the Lord. You say, I don't know what I'm going to give my kids for Christmas. How about give them a good mom and dad? Right. I'm a single parent. How about give them a good mom or a good dad? Just decide, I am going to, you know the, the thing I, uh, I just love, I heard a football player years ago say, what's the a Chicago Bears football player? He said, somebody interviewed him, he said, what is the greatest thing your dad ever did for you? And he said, he loved my mom. Come on. Mom. Amen. It's a big thing. Right. In that culture of professional athletics, he loved my mom. Look at Ephesians with me, chapter 4. And, um, I'm sorry, chapter 2. Listen to what I mean, not what I say. <laughs> verse 4. Ephesians 2, verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great what? Love. Great love. Not just love, but great love. For His great love, wherewith He hath loved us. God loves you. And today, could you rest in His faithfulness? Could you rest in His sovereignty? But could you rest in God's love? You say, I'm not sure about tomorrow. Nobody's sure about tomorrow, but I'm sure God loves me. Amen. I'm not sure about my health. I'm not sure about my wife's health. But I am sure God loves me. Look at verse 5. Ephesians 2 verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ. Here, here we are, old, rotten sinners, deserving to go to hell, and God loved you. God let His Son die for you and for me when we were worthless sinners. And if God loved us when we were far from Him and enemies of the cross, doesn't He love you today? Come on. They say, oh, I've made some stupid mistakes. Which of us doesn't love a stupid child? Don't, don't raise your hand. <laughs> Say, oh, my kid was stupid, but I love him. I'm going to slap him when we get home. But my, no stupid kids up here, okay? But we love you. If you do something stupid, your pastor loves you, even if your parents don't. <laughs> Isn't God good? Well, he's, he's, God is so faithful and God is so good. So verse 4, for the great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin. You've got to put those verses together. But God, who is rich in mercy for His great love, wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sin. Sinners, terrible sinners, and He loves us. He's going to love you to 
through your difficult days. Verse 6. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. Now, let's look at that. What is the tense, past, present, future? Look at verse 6. And hath raised us up together. What is the tense of that? Hath, past tense, raised us up together. All right. And made us sit together. What are we going to do with that one? And made us, past tense, sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You understand? Here's where we are today. Here's tomorrow. Here's yesterday. And if Mrs. Bailey's, if I get the tense wrong, don't tell me, okay? God has already raised me from spiritual death. He already has seated me in heavenly places. And today, walking through the present, I'm already raised from spiritual death. And I have already been seated in heavenly places. And as I walk into my future, I'm already there. I am today seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. See, Jesus is in heaven next to the Father. And when I got saved, the Bible, it's a funny term we don't understand. I have been placed in Christ. Amen. Like, I take this bottle of water and I put it in the pulpit. And when I got saved, God took me and put me Amen. in Christ. Christ is right now at the right hand of the Father. So I right now am present tense, seated in heavenly places. Look at the next word. Verse 7. That in the ages to come, that in the future days, look, I'm already there, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness to us. So here we go back. For the great love wherewith God hath loved us, he loved me even when we were dead in sins, and hath already raised us together, raised us from spiritual death and seated us together in heavenly places. And then that next verse, that in the ages to come, God could show how good he is. You know what's going to happen one day? God is going to be up in heaven with you. You're going to be up in heaven with God. And he's going to be showing you all the good things he did for you. Amen. I think one day, there's Pat McDowell in the front row. And I can remember the first time I met Pat McDowell. I walked into their house. He was ninth grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, somewhere near. I walked in. His parents are there. Maybe his mom. I can't remember. And the, the kids are there, the three kids. He and his two sisters. And she says, this, this is the pastor. And they, he looked at me, and he turned around and walked out of the room. <laughs> all three of them did. Now, I like me enough for all of us, so it's okay. <laughs> They handed out self-esteem. I got double, 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 double. And it's like me saying, you know what? I love you, even though you were rude to me the first time we met. And one day up in heaven, God's going to say, Ray Johnson, remember when you were a bratty kid? I still gave you a good wife. I believe every time we walk by the throne of God, he's going to say, hey, Remember when I did this for you? Only with God, it might be in big screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember Manny Tanuyan when you were spray painting buildings in LA? Come on. <laughs> and I saved you. Manny's going to walk away from God and say, Man, God is great love. Great love wherewith he had loved us. Read those verses again. Let's go back to verse 4, putting this in the picture in our mind. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, half a present tense or past tense, however you want to put it, quickened us together, made us alive with Christ. By grace are you saved. Verse, verse uh, 6. And hath raised.
raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ, verse 7, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ. And I just love the idea that I get to go to heaven. Amen. I love the idea that I'm already seated in heaven. And that when I get to heaven, God is going to know me personally. And I, I personally, I think we're going to walk around. And Pat and I, we're wandering down the golden streets together because the girls are home cooking strawberry rhubarb pie for us. And, um, and everybody in heaven will know how to cook pie. But, um, and we're walking along, and we'll be able to just see the glow of God. And we'll just say, God, sure good to us. Amen. It's a real place. It's a real place where you, in Christ, are already seated. You know, already, Miss Jefferson is seated there. Gary just waiting for the real thing. Already. And we're going to get to heaven, and we're going to be in a real city, with real people, with a real God, who's going to keep reminding us how awesome. Amen. But let's go, let's go on a little bit further. Just we got another minute or two here. Look at verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. This Christmas time. It's the gift of God. By grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself. We didn't save ourselves. It wasn't our good works. Verse 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast. It's God's grace that he reached down out of heaven when we were dead in sin and hath raised us up together, Amen. seated us in heavenly places that in the ages to come he might show his exceeding goodness toward us. For by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourselves a gift. This Christmas time, underneath the Christmas tree, you get a gift. You don't you have that because you're good. You have it because the giver is good. And the gift of God is eternal life. God so loved the world. Let's go back to Mary. Don't lose your place. Jesus. The angel comes to Mary and says, Your name is at stake. The name of your fiancé, your future is at stake. And if she knew the scriptures, the Bible says a sword would pierce through her. Because she's going to see her own son. The boys sang about it. She knew somehow her son would live again. God sent this angel. And the angel said, Mary, the impossible is going to happen. And she just said, I'll trust you. I'll trust you. Can you trust him? See, I'm not as athletic as the other kids. I'm not as pretty as the other girls. I'm not as smart as the other kids. I'm not as whatever. You don't have to be as anything because God so loved the world. And for his great love wherewith he loved us, he raised us, even when we were dead in trespasses and sin, he raised us up together and seated us in Christ. And there you are today. You can look back for me. It was August of 1975 in a city park when a teenager was talking to me and I trusted Christ as my Savior. I knew I was a sinner. I knew Jesus died for me. I just didn't understand how you got in the gate. And it wasn't a, who was better than the other. It was who was willing to admit there was a sinner in need of a Savior. And by grace are you saved through faith, it says there in verse 8. Verse 8, for by grace are you saved through faith. And if you can't look back to a time you trusted Christ and asked Him to save you, put your faith in Christ, make it today. Because all of us, all of us are dead in sin. Every one of us, we're here in the, in the depravity and the shame of sinfulness. And it's not my goodness, it's by the grace of God. God would lift me up and allow me to be forgiven by the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. For by grace are you saved through faith. But that's verse 4. Let's go back to that. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. God, Steve Rose sitting back there. Got two girls up here behind me, I think. One. Oh, they're both up there. 
Steve Rose riding a bus to Sunday school or calling up somebody getting a ride to Sunday school. Years and years ago, God saved Steve Rowe. God puts him, places him in Christ, spiritually seats him in heaven. He loves him that much. You think maybe Steve can trust him when he breaks his leg? Come on. You think maybe he can trust him when both of his girls are a little weird? <laughs> They're perfect. I mean, they're like their mom, not like their dad. <laughs> if you think maybe we could rest in the Lord, could, could we just take a deep breath? <sighs> you're good. Amen. Even though everything down here stinks, yes. you're good. Amen. Amen. And you know what? Actually, I'm already there anyway. <laughs> I'm already seated in heavenly places. And what the doctor says, and what the, the economy says, you know what, you're good. And that's what Mary did. In Luke 2, 38, Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. Mary just said, Jesus, whatever. No, she's carrying Jesus. She said, God, Jesus, they're all the same. God, whatever you want. Not because of what we see around us. Because of who lives above us. I'll trust you. I will trust you. And this morning, I want to just encourage you. Rest in him. The sealy, posturepedic, <laughs> gel-filled tubes with pillow top that adjusts. Rest. You get in that recliner, you get home from church, you eat too much. Well, last night I had more, I don't know what kind of meat I had, but I had so much meat last night. It was so good. I'm not a meat eater. I went back and I loaded up on that stuff. And then we had 10 times dessert. We had so much. Ate, we ate, and we ate. It was great. And you go to your recliner and you go, wow. There's nothing like resting after a good meal. And Psalm 37 says, rest in the Lord. Not rest in your job. Not rest in your health. Not not rest. Uh, not rest in your money. Come on. Rest in the Lord. Amen. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Father, we ask Your help today. Uh, could we learn to rest in Your faithfulness? Could we learn to rest?